when we had very simple circuits that only had one battery and the rest were resistors, we were able to use equivalent resistance rules to simplify the resistor element array into just one resistor and then solve. If we have another battery, like a two battery system, or if we have any other complications, we can't do that and we have to use our junction rules and our loop rules. So our junction rules is that the sum of the current in is equal to the sum of the current out. And our loop rule is that the sum of the delta v's over a closed loop is equal to zero. So how do we go about solving all of this? Our step one, we want to guess the current over each resistor. And it's not necessary to be correct in our guesses. If we have a wrong guess, it just means current. So let's take a guess. It doesn't have to be the right one, or we don't have any numbers for this one. But we're going to guess that the current is going to go in this direction over R1. We're going to guess the current is going to go in this direction over R3, so we can call this R3 one, and we're going to guess that the current is going to go in this direction for I2. What this gives us then is it gives us that at this junction right here, now we know a lot about this junction because we know which currents are going in, which currents are going out. So now we can write generate a junction rule. based on our guesses. So looking at this junction rule, I have I1 is coming into the, the junction, and I2 and I3 are coming out of the junction. So I have I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Now, how many unknowns do I have? Well, I know all the resistances, I know the voltages. I don't know I1, I2, and I3. So I have two more equations that I need from this one equation that I already have. So our next thing is, is that we're only going to have certain loop rules. Let's show the possible loops that we could have, and then we are going to then show that we only need two of them, and in fact the third one is going to actually actively hinder us. We could consider a loop rule through this left section of this, and we are not going to draw directions on that side. So we could consider a loop rule of some direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise, a loop rule of some direction, either counterclockwise or clockwise of this left thing, and a loop rule clockwise or counterclockwise of this whole thing. We only need two of them, and in fact, the third one is going to hurt us. So what we want to do is we want to write find loops that go in the same direction as our guest currents. So let's look at each of these individual loops as if they were just the only elements themselves. So for this right loop, we have our battery A, resistor 1, resistor 3, and that's that. And then we have, so A, And we've guessed the directions, right? This is I1. We've guessed the direction. This is I3. So we can see we have a pretty clear and pretty easy loop in which to build, that we can build a loop that goes along in this clockwise direction. And if we build that loop with that clockwise direction, we would get EA minus I1 R1 minus I3. R3 equals zero, right? If we're going in this direction, we're going adding the battery, and then as long as we go in the same direction as the current, our resistors always drop. So this is one another reason to do this, is our resistors will always be negative. We don't have to think of resistors adding voltage. Let's look at left. So for left, we have the junction resistor 
battery resistor. And we have our currents are going in this direction here and this direction here. So this is a bit of a trouble because we can't go clockwise because that goes against I3. And we can't go counterclockwise because that goes against I2. So what we have to say is we have to say there's no loop possible. This is fine, this is cool because right, one of the three is not gonna be. And so let's show outside now. For outside, we're gonna go start with battery A, get resistor one, get resistor two, and get battery B, and we close the loop. And let's draw the currents that we guessed for this. I1 and I2. So again, a clockwise style loop. Let's show that if we go along in this direction. Should work just fine. It goes with the current for both of these. And if we read this off, then we get positive battery A. It's a resistor, so minus I1, R1. It's a resistor, so minus I2, R2. And then now our loop is going against the battery. It's going from big plate to small plate, so we get minus B equals zero. So then we get right our next two equations, this one and this one. So EA minus I1, R1 minus I3, R3 equals zero, and EA minus I1, R1 minus I2, R2 minus B equals zero. And now we have our three equations and our three unknowns, I1, I2, I3, I1, I2, I3, and we can go and solve this. Um, so if we don't do this, then we might choose one of the wrong loops where we might not have a choice of which one to do or anything like that. If we right, don't guess the currents right or don't guess the currents um, in a general direction, we might have some right, different directions and things like that. So we really want to be very sure that we follow these rules so we have a consistent approach to how to solve circuits.